How did one turn into an artist? I, I, I don't think that I've ever really turned into an artist. I think that, in fact, I, I know that, um, yeah, it was an, uh, a lecturer in Otago where I was studying to um, get into architecture school in Auckland of all places. And I asked him about architecture and said, uh, if I do architecture, does that mean I've, there's a lot of logistics and are there lots of law, is there lots of law? Do I have to obey lots of rules? Do I have to deal with plumbers and tradespeople and councils and legis legislation and stuff? And he went, yep. And I kind of looked at him in the eye and I went, hmm, I'm not sure if I'm really up for that. And he just looked at me, you should be an artist. And I'd never thought of being an artist before because you don't make, you don't, you, there's no living to be made. I mean, I was already a surfer and um, everything else that goes along with being a lout at university. So I realised that um, after, that if I wanted to be an artist, I was going to have to learn how to draw again. We went to university and then hung around a lot of artists and I sort of thought, I kind of like being around these people. They're people that, that I felt really natural being around. So I think it was more of a sort of a social contract that I found most um, agreeable. And then of course, you have to determine what you're going to do if you're going to become an artist. You've got to work out what that means because everyone has to find their own kind of, I wouldn't, I'd say language or approach or, you know, recipe or, um, and I, I guess one of the things that I noticed very early on as I was developing my thinking was I was very fond of writing, I was very fond of um, drawing, uh, very in, interested in primarily, I guess, probably painting uh, and, you know, and, and then at the same time, one, you know, I guess, you know, what what did I have that would make it interesting to 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 do that? I mean, I I wasn't entirely foolish enough to think that just because I liked doing it didn't mean it was any good. So how do you how do you find out whether what you do is any what or what the value of it is? How do you sort of measure it? And so then you go back to your your, your friends, your colleagues. So this this is what you know. This is what happens. You build this sort of group of colleagues and associates and friends and then eventually art dealers and collectors and you begin to find out what the hell's going on. Um, and then of course if you want to, you know, being an artist, you wake up every morning and you go, I don't know what I'm going to do today. I and mean, you forget you've forgotten everything you've done for the last 20 or 30 years and you have to start all over again. So it's that endless trudge between, you know, between the home and the, and the studio, wherever that may be. and just force yourself to jump off the diving board and get on with it. I mean, we're told that art is important. I don't know if it is important. Um, I, I don't think I would rush, I mean, I think surgery is important. Uh, you know, that can be quite useful if people want to stay alive. I think, um, you know, vegetables are important. I think dirt's important. And I think intrinsically we know that it is valuable because it's, it, it, it gives us a, a means to, um, in, a, in an unempirical way, measure the world in which we live. Um, we, we don't measure art by centimetres in terms of how good it is. We measure it by something that's quite in, that, that could be described as being intangible. Uh, we, in New Zealand, I guess we're surrounded by indigenous art, which is the primary art form here, and then the imported understanding of art, which was various Western and American and 
Aboriginal traditions, African. So, you know, our understanding of art here is very multifarious, but I think that the, you know, art, art is important because, for example, our understanding of New Zealand and its heritage is primarily through the art that was discovered here by the Westerners and then, and then kind of rationalised in a way, um, if you can ever do that. But the art that we would describe as being, say, you know, Maori art, is an insight into the soul of how people live and think and relate to their environment, both practically and in also a sort of a, an, an abstract way, in, in terms of a making way. You know, how do you build a house? How do you build a po? How do you thatch a roof? How do you carve a boat? I, think, I mean. If art's important, then maybe it floats. This, some of this, some of these works remind me of uh, doodles and little paintings I was doing as, as a you know young artist trying to make ends meet, working in vineyards, selling the odd painting for the for a, a meal out or a bottle of wine or pay the rent or put petrol in the car, or, you know, make these little paintings and sell them for 20 bucks. And, and these remind me of those in a way, very, very simple schematic kind of sketches um, around sounds and, and words or noises that people make, you know, a lot of repetition, a lot of um, very, very monochromatic. Uh, so there's no plan in, in now repeating what I did all those years ago, you know, 30, 20 or 30 years ago, which is a frightening thing to have to admit. So it, it is, it, it's, a, it's a big show in a small room. Not a small show in a small room. It's a big show because it, it's sort of at, at a point where now, I, and now what I do um, is able to touch corners of my thinking and my life that I never thought I'd be able to make work that was able to do that. And that's not saying that I think it's important or significant. In many respects, I'm making stuff about, making work about things that are insignificant. I'm making things, making work about thoughts that are so light and kind of suspended in space, they're almost waiting to find meaning. And I don't know when that will be. I'm, I'm not. I've sort of gone away from, I'm going away or gone away at present from trying to make work about anything in particular other than the, the idea of, of just breath and thought and being oneself and you know, ch challenging oneself not to fill things up but to leave things out, and trying not to make moves, trying to sort of remove all the all the sort of fill that in that that some of uh, the pieces that I've made over you know have been very very busy. These are just very similar to those, but they're much lighter. They're able to, and in a show here in the show here uh, at the moment because of the nature of the room, the, the panelled, the wood panelled walls, all the lines going through the floor, the walls, it made perfect sense to keep colour out of the work and to continue with the idea of um, using lines and throwing, you know, and, th and throwing letters or sort of gasps of thought or little words that come from plays or uh, there's the, the idea of being comfortable and uncomfortable. Um, there's the, the idea of being or being. You know, this is, if I, if I paint two E's, it's only because it's part of a word that's a being. You know, and is it a has been or is it a, is it a could be or is it a, they're all these little fragments that I, I pull to pieces and it feels like at the moment I've just pulled things to such, i pull things to pieces that if I keep pulling them to pieces, they might not there might not be much left. 